everybody. Joe Scott here with HigherHertz.com and uh, welcome to another episode of How to Play the Five String Banjo. Before we get started, uh, please make sure to click on the subscribe button as well as that little bell. That way we'll let you know when there's future videos for you to check out. So um, yeah, let's get started. All right, so today's lesson's gonna be just a little bit different. Uh, we're not gonna be playing the banjo much. We're actually going to talk about the best way to record the five string banjo. And as you can imagine, there's a, a lot of lot of options for this and, and anywhere from the most basic and simplest to uh, very advanced professional recording studio quality. I'm more just gonna give a, just an overview of the best mic placement uh, and that type of thing. So on your computer, whether you're using a Mac or a PC, there's a lot of different software out there for recording anything. Um, the most, uh, probably the most well-known in the professional realm is called Pro Tools, which is what I use. You can subscribe to that or buy it outright. Uh, it is more pricey and it's uh, the learning curve's a lot steeper. Uh, if you're just getting started with this kind of thing, I recommend just going online and Googling um, free recording software or on your Apple computer. Of course, there's GarageBand and you can get wonderful results just recording straight into GarageBand. And you're gonna need for that a microphone as well as a, a digital interface. So it goes from analog, your microphone, which you plug into it, uh, into the digital realm. They also sell microphones that have a USB port and perhaps that's the most, uh, you know, if you're just getting started, the easiest, cheapest, fastest way to get up and running. You simply uh, buy the mic and it's got the uh, USB. You plug it right into your computer, your laptop or what have you, and you'll be ready to go. Well, first of all, when you're getting ready to record something, whether it's just for yourself or your family or friends, or you want to put out a record, you want to put out that next hit record, you want to make sure the instrument itself, in this case the banjo, you want to make sure that it's in tip-top shape. So I'm all when I'm getting ready to record anything for keeps, I pull all the strings off my banjo, I clean it up really well, uh, and put brand new strings on it. I think brand new strings are a wonderful thing. Uh, that gives you all the brightness and the snap and the bite and just the, the good tone that uh, is gonna come across very well on a recording. So that's the first thing you wanna do is get the banjo ready. You also wanna be well rehearsed. Um, as you'll find when, uh, as soon as you sit down to record something and the red light comes on, it's a little, it can be a little intimidating. And if you're very prepared and you really know what you're gonna play, uh, that's very helpful, all right? So you've got everything ready to go. You've got your software set up. And now, as far as microphones are concerned, you can spend $50 and get a decent mic, or you can go all the way up to, uh, this is an AKG 414 that I use. Uh, it's more expensive. You're gonna pay 800 to $1,200 for a mic like this, uh, but it is a professional mic that you'll find in most um, professional recording studios. But again, you do not have to spend that much money. You can get uh, any numbers. Uh, the blue uh, blue line of microphones is wonderful, and they make the USB type you can plug right into your laptop as well. You've got your mic set, uh, and then uh, once you get the mic and you've got it on your mic stand, that might be another purchase you'll need to make uh, just to make sure it's positioned properly. Now, if you notice what I've got going on here, I've got the AKG 14 sitting here. And you notice it's going down so it's straight on with the head of the banjo. The banjo is a, a loud instrument, so I, I, you don't want to be too close to the mic because you might overdrive the mic causing distortion, which is not good. Uh, it just won't sound as good. Sound needs time to develop. So you want to come back, especially with an instrument like the banjo, a good foot uh, to a foot and a half, all right? And straight onto the instrument. I tend to have the element of the microphone hitting just the head somewhere around the bridge here bridge of the banjo. Anywhere in there I think you'll like it. And some of this is trial and error. You're going to want to record a little bit and then listen back either in good headphones or on your stereo speakers or whatever you have um, just to see do I like the sound of the instrument. And there's no right or wrong um, when it comes to the sound of any instrument. Um, with the banjo at the end of the day do you like it? Do you like the way it's sounding? Uh, is it what you envision your sound to be like? And you can continually uh, experiment. You can get even further away from the mic. When you get the further away from the mic, the more you start picking up the room, 
uh, the way the room sounds, and you get the room acoustics that come more into play. And that can either be a good thing or a bad thing. If you're in a room that just doesn't sound good to begin with, it's going to be a bad thing. So I try to find that happy medium where it's mostly the sound of the banjo getting fed right into the microphone. So again, you got the mic about a foot and a half away. It's straight on to the head here. And now on your recording software, you're going to see what uh, we used to call VU meters. They were actual physical meters. Nowadays, they're just a digital light that jumps around. And you want that to be, when you strike the instrument about the volume that you're going to be recording about. I always try to record as hot as possible. So for me, it's usually hitting in the 10. You don't, you don't want it to go into the red, or you don't want to see those red warning lights, because at that point, you'll start hearing some digital distortion. And digital distortion is not pretty. You do not want to introduce that into your recording. You know, you might want to go whatever song you're recording, you might want to go to that part of the song and hit it and see how hard it's hitting. You can adjust accordingly, okay, either on the in Garage, um, in Garage Band or whatever software you use, and you can bring that down uh, so you're not recording too loud. Of course, if you move in or out from the banjo, that'll dec if you move away, that'll decrease the volume going into the to the recording. Um, or the closer you get, it'll get louder that way as well. And so once you're comfortable, and that's a big part of this whole process, is to make sure that you are comfortable. Um, because you're going to be spending a little while in this position. So find a comfortable chair. You want to be sitting up straight. You want everything to be in order here. Your technique, which we've worked on in previous videos. And then you get the level set to your recording. You got your mic set. And, um, and you will be ready to go. If you don't have a room that you like the sound of your banjo in, it's good to just find even in your bedroom or, or wherever. Uh, if you wanna take the room out of the equation, you get a little closer to the mic and you get in a smaller room or more of a dead room so there's not a lot of reflections uh, hitting off the walls because if that starts to happen, your banjo will have uh, unusual sounds. It'll sound perhaps like it's far away It'll sound too um, echoey, it just won't sound good. Sometimes a, a very dead, uh, dry room is a much better way to go uh, when you're recording. You got your new strings on, you're all tuned up. Make sure you're in good tune, because if you're not, it, that's another biggie. It's not gonna be good. It's just not gonna sound good. So using your electronic tuner, and then uh, you're ready to go and you can just play your heart out and capture that beautiful banjo picking that you've been working so hard on. All right, so that's it. Thanks for tuning in. And if you've not done so yet, uh, please subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Also click on that little bell to make sure you get uh, notices for future videos that we'll be putting out. Also, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So in the comment section, please, good or bad, leave a comment and share the video if you'd like. Uh, we That helps us a great deal as well. So yeah, start recording. Well, first practice, 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 and then start recording so you can share the your wonderful talents with the world. So I look forward to seeing you at the next five string banjo lesson.